to M Barcelona for Mobile World Congress 2023, and I'm delighted to be joined by Mikhail Trabia, who is Chief Technology and Innovation Officer at uh, Orange. So, Mikhail, thank you very much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join us. Um, so, there's much talk in the industry these days about telcos becoming techcos. Uh, is that a transition that Orange is taking or needs to take? Well, I think that first telco will still be telco tomorrow. And I think it's important because that's our business. And we believe there is high value in our business to connect people. We are the entry point to the internet. Having said that, obviously, the way we will do our business will be different. And we will be more and more introducing advanced tech, uh, IT, cloud, AI. And we are currently uh, on, we are currently uh, uh, ongoing on a big transformation on network. This is a paradigm shift, which is basically the cloud transformation that we bring to the telco world to be hundreds times faster to gain in agility, resilience, and performance. So yeah, you, you will still be a telco, of course, but does, do all these changes mean that you're operating in a different way on a, on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it impacting the day-to-day the yes. -day Workforce. Yes, this, there will be a radical change in our industrial model in the way we think, we build, and we operate the networks. This will be uh, uh, based on much more automation, on AI, and basically uh, we will be able to uh, uh, do, for instance, uh, network maintenance and diagnosis on fault management within minutes instead of hours. We will be able to do uh, uh, a security update on our network on a daily basis instead of months today. Right. So this will be a complete change in the way we operate the network. This will be also a change in the capacity that we will expose uh, thanks to API uh, to uh, our customers, to the enterprise. They will be able to benefit from all the performance and the power of the network. Okay, excellent. Um, now, obviously, we're here at Mobile World Congress. 5G, of course, still a massive part, and we have our spotlight on 5G uh, as well. And the 5G standalone core, a really important part of the mobile operator tool set. And a year ago, Orange announced its 5G SA core technology partners. How big a challenge has it been to get that deployment up and running? And, and where are you in that process? Well, we are still on track. We announced that we would open uh, 5G SA in 2023. Uh, in Europe, and we have started with Spain. They just uh, we just uh, launched and announced this uh, 5GSA, and we are going to uh, roll out and to have 5GSA uh, up and running uh, in the other countries in 2023. Having said that, it's it's very important to understand that first, uh, when you have a new technology, uh, new generation with 5G, it takes years to uh, grow. This is not a one-stop. Uh, uh, element you, you over the 10 years of the lifetime of a generation it's still progressing and with 5G it's the same 5G SA will be live in 2023 but then it's also about transforming our IT bringing agility in order to be able to commercialize it because at the end of the day with 5G SA you can do network slicing you can have on-demand quality for gaming uh, for uh, uh, video for some uh, uh, security services that need uh, very specific requirements it can be low latency, it can be guaranteed uh, connectivity. Uh, uh, but to do that and to do that on an agile way, uh, you need to have not only those slices, but to be able to open them dynamically. And this is an evolution that will also embark IT evolution, end-to-end -end evolution, not only on the network side. And this will take a little bit more time, so that's rather 2024, 2025, to have, I would say, the full uh, 5G SA capability end-to-end -end that we will be able to expose to, uh, to the customers and to, to our partners. So lots of different parts coming together and, and building that big 5G puzzle. Um, so another, uh, something that Orange has been doing really interesting the last couple of years is with the uh, Picio experimental network. Uh, what has Orange learned from that and from its Open RAN lab that you opened in Paris? We learned a lot actually because once again this is a complete new way of doing things. We are integrated CI/CD, continuous uh, integration, continuous deployment. Uh, that's the uh, cloud way of doing. So we are building expertise. Uh, we are building double expertise by the way, network and IT cloud expertise. 
And we have learned, for instance, that we are able, thanks to this way of doing, thanks to automation, to have a recovery of a network in less than one hour. Uh, in uh, Portugal, there has been a cyber attack. It took 10 days to 14 days to have the network back. With, and it was already a challenge to do that. Huh? Yeah. Uh, with the old way of doing in the telco industry, with this CI CD with automation, we are able to rebuild from scratch complete network in less than one hour. Wow. We also learned about security. This is a very different way of handling security. In the traditional telco uh, world, security was managed by, uh, uh, you know, uh, by borders and having security at the, at the borders. Here we're moving to a zero trust uh, security mindset, meaning that we don't trust the other component and we, uh, uh, this is a, a, an important shift that needs to be integrated also in the, in the telco industry. Okay. So Open RAN is something that uh, Orange has been um, supporting and working on for a number of years. You have the, that lab in Paris um, and things are, are moving on, not always in the smoothest of ways with Open RAN. Has Orange's view of Open RAN changed at all in the past year? Um, and how do you see such systems fitting into the network evolution going forward? I think it's more, more or less in line with what we have uh, anticipated, okay. basically. We have said that Open RAN is the way to go, that uh, we are a strong supporter of Open RAN, that we want from 2025 to have all our new rollouts uh, to be Open RAN uh, compliant. Uh, we also have said that it would take a little bit time to gain maturity and now we see the maturity is coming which allow uh, us to start rollout of Open RAN commercially and we will start in Romania in partnership with Vodafone because we believe Open RAN is perfectly suited uh, for RAN sharing operation right. uh, and also we will start with rural areas because it is uh, simpler uh, without massive MIMO to start, but we see the technology is maturing a lot. We see a lot of uh, partners. The ecosystem is growing. We see the energy consumption, uh, which is very promising. We expect it to be better than uh, the one we have on current solution. Okay. Well, that's uh, encouraging news, I think, for the for the companies that are hoping that there's there'll be a different way an alternative way of being able to construct radio access networks in the future. Mikhail, thanks very much for joining us today. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.